actually uh, Vaisal Vishnu. Uh, I'm currently working as a software engineer, full stack software engineer in uh, Plexi at work. Um, as a software engineer, I started my career in uh, Python, of uh, uh, UCB. <laughs> and uh, I started as a back end developer. So eventually I landed upon uh, Django Rest Framework. I hope you, some of you might know what is Django, right? Django uh, Rest Framework. So uh, for a long time I'm working on Django Rest Framework, then I eventually uh, in that meantime, I heard about fast API. In that time, uh, I think uh, oh, yeah, there was another framework on the market, uh, more like an blast. So I barely scratched the sur surface and I just leave it there. Uh, then after, then after a long time, I joined my first company and they are actually developing a product on fast API. So that the moment I really want to post into developing a product on fast API. So uh, in that moment. Uh, in that production environment, uh, we just uh, we actually have a uh, crisis. We actually need to develop an uh, entire backend systems MVP in just uh, 10 to 12 days. So in that time, uh, we think, uh, oh, that was actually not that much feasible because we only have two backend developers there in that time, and they they are actually building and uh, trading business solutions for the rest of the you know. So uh, actually, we built the entire MVP within less than 12 days in that time. So that's the moment I think FastAPI was that much incredible and that much uh, the FastAPI actually gave me that much excitement in that time. So uh, I believe you all get that same excitement after this presentation. I hope that will be happening in this day. So uh, welcoming you all and also thanks for Post United for inviting me for uh, this presentation and thank you. Thanks for giving me this wonderful opportunity. So uh, so before starting about the FastAPI thing. I want to really know some things about you guys. Uh, how many of you guys are actually coming from a Python related background? Python? Python. 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 Python? Just Python. Just Python. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, how many of you are already? Uh, know, everyone, uh, everyone is working with Python right now, ML and other things. But uh, right now, uh, how many of you already work with fast API? At least a uh, little experience? Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I didn't expect that, but that was fine. I understand. <laughs> so, uh, before I'm going to explain about Fast API, I really want to introduce you some uh, super person, some super personality, I think. This is the creator of Fast API. <laughs> this mustache stealer is the creator of Fast API. Uh, uh, for the Python community and the Pythoners like us, we, are, we mostly consider his face as the logo of Fast API. Because uh, he has some iconic thing in his uh, mustache, you all noticed by this time probably. And he's at uh, right now he's working as an open source fellow. So uh, and he's a uh, he's a uh, well-known open source uh, developer in the Python community. So uh, I hope you guys connect with him. And he's actually having uh, he's actually a cool person. So you, if you connect with uh, on Twitter or something like he he doesn't uh, um, ignore you. If you, if, you, um, if you guys text you, he will text you. So he's actually um, such a good, cool fellow. So please connect with him. So uh, for the next thing, I really want to show you some, some one more person. Uh, his name is Sam Alkali. He's actually a software engineer. Uh, does anyone know who he is? No. Expected. <laughs> so uh, he is actually an. Uh, he's actually a software engineer from UK, but uh, he just created some marvelous and wonderful uh, library currently out in Python. The library name was the revealing was so much better. <laughs> I hope this is not made in fast API. Yeah, these are these are the pins of fast API. It's like this slideshow was not made in fast API. It's basically Google, you know, <laughs> open source, finally. But uh, uh, he's the creator of PyDandy. So PyDandy is uh, basically a data validation library that was currently available in Python. Uh, at, at right now, it is the one of the fastest and well featureish um, data validation library in Python. So that was actually a, a 
for as I said, we have a lot of partners in uh, data validation things for yeah, in our production environment. That was actually really, really a big headache. So whenever, so whenever this library was introduced, the entire game was changed. Lot of, lot of developers, uh, not only fast API, uh, fast API developers, lot of other projects are also using Pytanic for the data validation and other stuff. So Pytanic was actually, uh, recently Pytanic has uh, one more application too. Uh, for the major components of Pytanic was written in Rust. So it is actually giving you an incredible speed right now. So uh, Pytanic is more like a pearl in the Py community. So the next person in this, this stupid face. Uh, I don't know, I really want to explain uh, this person in this uh, presentation, but I really don't have any option. Uh, <laughs> I really want to find a good picture of him, so I, as a retired hacker, I just wear my black hoodie yesterday and uh, I turn off my green black terminal and I do my ocean searching. Uh, I don't know who he is, he is mostly a retired hacker from Anonymous 2 because he is, he is, his faces are not on the internet guys. The one of the legend creator in Python, but his face is not on the internet. I don't know why, I, I spend a lot of time to find his face. I actually uh, find his three of his photos and this is the first photo I can put my own, uh, put on my presentation. I don't know why, why he is like that. Good face. Um, so who is he? Who is he? Does anyone know who is Tom Christie? <laughs> Obviously, no one knows. That's all he also wanted. Uh, he is actually the founder of uh, Encode. Encode was an actually an open source uh, company or an open source foundation that is a uh, that's actually on uh, the Python community. I uh, hope you uh, have you guys have already worked on uh, Django Rust framework? Anyone? Yes. Yeah. So uh, he's the creator of Django Rust framework. Yeah. What is he's, Starlet, by the way? Uh, Tom Christie. Uh, no, no. What is Starlet? Starlet. Started, I will explain that in the next day. Yeah. So uh, he's, he, uh, he's more like a living legend in the Python community. I'm uh, boasting him to so much because uh, I really like his product, uh, not his face. So <laughs> that's the reason why I'm explaining this. And what is Starlet? Um, Starlet is basically a lightweight ASCII framework currently right out of the Python uh, network. Uh, ASCII framework. Okay. I will explain the Starlet in my next slides. So don't worry. So uh, it was actually a really lightweight ASCII as a, um, framework available right now. And it is one of the fastest framework currently outright in Python library. So uh, that was actually a uh, wonderful, uh, wonderful thing. And it is the place of FastAPI too. So uh, without this starlight, FastAPI wouldn't be existing right now. And the next innovation is Ubicon. Does anyone hear about, uh, about Ubicon? Uh, Ubicon is uh, is the one of the fastest uh, ASCII server currently in Python. Uh, according to the benchmark, Ubicon is the one of the fastest current ASCII server that was uh, that, that's actually asynchronous too. So, so what does uh, ASCII server mean? ASCII server. ASCII server means basically a gateway interface that is written in asynchronous format. What? Basically a uh, gateway interface. Gateway for what? Gateway for. Uh, uh, is it an API Okay. So uh, that is Ubico. It is one of the fastest library currently uh, out in the market. So what is this next in next generation? It's SPT. Voice was breaking, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, that's a much more HTTPX. 
Yeah, I know you know, I said, oh, oh, excuse me, I'll back it, oh, you hate about it. So what is this CDBS? Uh, I don't know how to explain it really well, but I can, I'll give you a simple, I, I can explain it in simple ways. Uh, in Python, request is one of the purpose, uh, one of the popular library. Uh, AOS CDB, AOS is one of the fastest library currently out in the market. HTTP is the feature-rich library out in the market. That's it. That's the one of the easiest explanation I get to the for explaining a request library. Uh, and obviously, it is Angular framework. So that's the reason why I include this stupid phrase in my presentation. He just created the one of the four uh, coolest library currently out in the Python industry. So he's more like a he's actually a living legend in this Python industry. That's the reason why I wrote this triple legend in my presentation. So that's that's pretty much about the open source community and those kind of stuff. So what is fast API? So what is fast API? Does anyone uh, have any words about fast API? Want to share anything? Else? Okay. <laughs> Okay, that's fine. So what is fast API? The fast API is, uh, I can uh, say it in, say it in a few words. So what is fast API? Fast API is actually lightweight, robust, ready for protection, micro framework for RESTful APIs. Okay, so fast API is actually really lightweight and uh, basically asynchronous in nature and ready, to, ready for protection directly from out of the box. And one of the micro, one of the fastest micro service available for RESTful API production. That is what is fast API. Okay. So I already mentioned fast API was uh, built in uh, a Starlet and UV code, and I already mentioned about its performance and those kind of stuff. So what is fast API and how is its performance? Which I will see as question. Uh, as I already uh, I hope you guys can see the Ubicon here because I already mentioned uh, Ubicon is the one of the fastest server uh, currently out in the fast API and uh, uh, sorry uh, currently in the Python uh, Python uh, industry and the second uh, second one so the fourth thing is fast API fast API is literally building stability and Ubicon so fast API is in the fourth place and the uh, and in the sixth position, there is a starlet. And I hope you guys are already working with Django and Flask. Uh, here is the Flask. 1,630 per second. And there is the Django here in the twelfth position with uh, 15,000. And if you are integrating Postgres, uh, Postgres with Django, you will uh, literally get uh, 15,000 for 500 something. It's just a, a 500,000 500 different, uh, difference. But if you directly compare that with fast API, it is roughly handling for 15,600 requests per second. And uh, the, uh, hope uh, there was actually a little confusion here. And there was a star that was actually under the fast API that was actually not technically possible. I think this is actually the overview of the rating. So that might be the reason. Because star, uh, basically Starlet was built up, uh, fast API was built up upon the Starlet. So you can say Starlet uh, is much more faster than Starlet. That is actually technically wrong. So this is actually an overview of the performance. Uh, you guys can see yourself uh, on a tech above of, of this uh, performance chart. So I already mentioned fast CPU was super fast and super cool. So how? Basically how? How fast CPU is that much speed? How, how fast CPU get that much speed? The answer is Ubicon plus Starlet. The one of the two fastest servers currently out in the market, Kanban and FastUV was born. That's it. So what is Starlet? Starlet is basically a framework, um, one of the fastest framework also, and uh, well, already mentioned about the speed, and you can uh, actually uh, Starlet is basically uh, synchronous in nature, so uh, uh, that is the main reason why Starlet uh, in that much plays in the uh, 
Python is really easy. And basically, you can do the background task. And uh, I hope you guys already, uh, some of you already worked in by uh, API things. So uh, if you're developing as an uh, API things in as a backend developer, you guys need to uh, handle the background task and those kind of uh, weird stuff in backend stage. Eh? So you can uh, easily uh, for handling background task and uh, implementing QB section with fast API was actually a piece of cake. You can easily do that. So actually fast API uh, so actually start like to reduce the effort for integrating uh, with, uh, adding all the functionality essentially needed for a backend. So you can easily add the background task and uh, start a bunch of down events and uh, there is an actually an inbuilt test client in it, um, uh, HTTP, yes, because the both are created by simple, so you just give it to for it. And uh, it, it manages the, the course and those kind of streets, session and cookies, obviously. Uh, I hope all the framework that feature. Uh, test origin and auto purpose because basically your functionality, okay, I would say, just say that in a sense. So what kind of, I already uh, mentioned uh, Starlight was big thing, one of the fastest framework early out in the market. So why we need fast API above it? Because Starlight is obviously fast, so why should we need fast API? And basically when I hear about fast API first time, I'm also doubtful. Wow, Malaya, you know. So <laughs> why you guys are saying, you are fast API? Why you are, uh, uh, consider the situation, if you are interviewing someone and he said, I am the best. But you won't say you are the best. We are, we can make it doubtful, right? So that's the same situation I was facing in that time. So uh, after 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 working with first API, I realized that it is not actually uh, a fake, uh, uh, fake thing. It is actually real. So why we need first API? That's the reason why I do this time. Uh, Astrology actually gives us some features. So what are the features? Data validation. I already mentioned that data validation. Start uh, first API actually added that by including the Pydantic in its uh, architecture and the serialization and automatic documentation. So actually, uh, first API actually gives you the automatic documentation for your APIs. That was actually uh, really awesome. I will show you that in, uh, in a minute, actually. So what is UECOM? It is actually perfect. That's the reason, because it is one of the fastest ascendants server currently out in the market. And uh, yeah, that's it. And it's actually, uh, uh, Unicorn is the recommended server to run fast API and Starlight both. Uh, and it is using UBU because uh, that is the one of the fastest single uh, event loop available in Python. And, uh, and also, uh, Unicorn actually allow you guys to uh, run the backend server in hot reload mode. If you guys have already worked with Flutter or any other uh, front-end open software, you guys already worked on the hot reload thing. That was actually super useful. So for, for the backend development, Unicorn is actually integrating the hot reload feature in, uh, in the development freeze. And it can obviously handle the thousands of connections, obviously. And uh, you can handle the workers and uh, timeouts and logins, uh, like, just like any other frameworks, because that's the reason why fast here, Unicorn is actually that much, that much perfection. So actually, I already mentioned first it was actually easy to learn and uh, super cool to code and it offers you a great speed. So actually, you can develop an uh, API server in just a minute with fast API in a minute. That's the main advantage. For the, uh, it's more like a production code too. You're, that's a feature of fast API. You can directly develop an hello. You can directly develop an production server directly out of the box. That's not the truly. So how fast? I know, I think he's a Java developer. <laughs> uh, just a quick question. Uh, can you show the last slide and explain to people who are not, uh, like people who are starting, uh, what an async uh, web server is doing, okay. right? Behind the... Okay. So, uh, yeah, uh, I already want to mention that. So, what is asynchronous? Uh, do, you guys any, uh, do you guys have any idea about uh, synchronous programming or asynchronous? Okay, no. so what is asynchronous? Asynchronous is basically, uh, as a, uh, I hope you guys are coming from a uh, little conversation background. So, as, as is fine also. Basically, uh, there is an, uh, consider, if you're writing a Python code, um, just I think I can show you an example, right? That was actually good, I think.
you ask me is there a meter for it? There's no, oh, there's nothing on that Twitter. I, I thought so good to me. From a product good access to Twitter thing, it kept showing me some security thing and then it's this account is the verification account is some boss when I think OG, I don't have access to those. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I think we shall ask. I can't do everything. <coughs> so they wouldn't know how many post it might be. So do you have like an example, like an uh, analogy, a real world example of? Yeah, that's what I'm Maybe thinking. that could be easy. No, 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 like an analogy, like uh, how bus buses come in to a bus stand, right? Uh, that could be an analogy uh, that we use. Okay. But a couple of examples like that. Ah, something like that. <coughs> maybe that would be faster, otherwise we yeah. have to waste time on it. Okay, okay, that was fine. Also. You can maybe just show us fast API instead of this. Ah, that you can show in demo. Then in demo, you can in show a demo in the end. Yeah. yeah. Now you can. Actually, I am going to fast API in my next slide. So, before that, I have a question from explaining fast API asking us programming. So, I can simply explain you guys something. Uh, consider, instead of you guys are uh, uh, writing a program in Python, so just write, uh, or just requesting a website or uh, just. Uh, th this consistor, uh, we are requesting a, uh, requesting a website from google.com or uh, just press google.com, that's the program we are writing, actually. Okay, so uh, if you are writing a program for fetching the google.com, so it will download the HTML code and those kind of stuff. Uh, hope you guys already work with uh, any other uh, request libraries in Python or any other languages. So that's how it's uh, literally working. So if you are requesting something on Google, the program will execute this. The program actually go to the uh, uh, domain and will find the IP and will download the thing. That's it. So that's the, that's actually synchronous actions. If you're going and fetching something and coming back. If you if you want to download uh, hundred files on internet, if you're uh, uh, if you're doing that on a for loop, that is actually doing uh, going picking one, going picking one. You know. So that's actually uh, really slow in Python. So if you, want, uh, if you want to do that in uh, Signals or any other panel computation techniques, what we usually do is, we just create a list of events. Because uh, consider, if I want to go out and, uh, and I want to buy a pizza or something, if I want to buy 100 pizza, uh, uh, what is Synchronous Co is doing is, I'm the only person available here, so I just go to the pizza shoe, I buy a pizza and I come back. I again go to the pizza shoe, buy a pizza and I put it here. I, I want to go there a hundred times. That was actually really bad, you know. So what is Palette Computation Asynchronous Program is doing? Uh, we are actually creating a, uh, it's a list of events. That's, uh, that's basically, uh, as a, I'm replicating myself or I'm uh, taking you guys with me and I'm going to the pizza store and buying hundred pizzas at a time or, um, and, and we are, uh, or else uh, th thinking the thing like this. We are, we the hundred people are going to the pizza store, and we all place the order one by one, and we are and, and we will get the pizza one by one. Whenever we get the pizza, we will return here. So we think uh, so. If, if I if I if want to go there and come back for hundred times, that will take a long time. If we all go at the same time, and uh, if we get back here uh, one by one, whenever we get the pizza, that's roughly take uh, the two or three times I am going to the pizza store. That's the maximum time it's going to take. So that is what is asking this program, asking this thing is doing. But in terms of the web server, right? Uh, let's take the example of the pizza server itself, right? The person at the pizzeria. So what you go uh, when you go there, you're talking to the pizza server, like uh, you're asking him for a particular type of pizza. Uh, let's say hundred people are asking for a type of pizza. That pizza server is not blocked on serving one pizza at a time. He can take order for the next pizza also, prepare one pizza, put it into the oven, wait for that pizza, but at the same time pick other orders, to prepare another pizza uh, and like serve the order in an asynchronous manner. That is what I meant by asynchronous. Okay. Uh, what you're trying to do, say is, uh, 
Cancer Fund uh, writing and, and develop several of us in the best way. Commission, if, uh, if, uh, if some of you guys are making a request to the web server, right? If some of you guys are making a request, and uh, consider that situation was actually, uh, my server was actually saturated at that, at that point. You can place the microphone a bit but farther. If I, if I, it won't be enough. <coughs> yeah, actually. Yeah, I'm <laughs> closing this question. Yeah, that's actually super discomfortable. So, I should take the point. The audio is becoming a bit uh, yeah, noisy. It's noisy. Very noisy. Yeah, it's uh, was this right? Was this, uh, you? Yeah, yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Yes, yes, it's carry on, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, uh, if you're making, uh, okay, what, what did I just show? Who did I just show? Did I say Yeah, we were talking about async, and you were giving an example of Pizzeria. Uh, yeah, Pizzeria. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, Kansas Zero Shape, you guys are making a request to the web server. The server was actually, uh, uh, the server actually limits its maximum performance. So what should we do? Our, our concern situation, if you are making a request to the uh, server, and at the same time, another few users want to access that same server too. So that is actually not possible in the synchronous way. So we will do that in asynchronous way. If, if, we, if we write the code in asynchronous way, if, uh, if I request that uh, server, and uh, if, if any of you guys also want to request the same data from the server, uh, uh, the server actually accepts my data and waits to uh, also in processing. In the meantime, if any of you guys also request to get that data, the server also takes that thing and it will process in the meantime also. According to the server's um, uh, power over uh, the efficiency of the farm. Yeah. So, uh, oh, what's the thing? Okay. Uh, fast to go. We actually use the percentage here, right? So uh, how fast? How fast you can actually create an API server in fast API? That's the uh, place where we left. So how fast? I can really show you guys. That was actually uh, our purpose. Please, okay. Just a minute. So actually, uh, create a folder and environment. Uh, activated an environment here. Hope you guys can see. And I'm just installing the fast API. You can start first API. That's it. First API was actually installed. So what should I do? I need to open my code editor. So if I open my code editor, uh, from first API, import. And I just need to create an object. Fast API. So I'm just going to create a simple uh, get API here. So I'm just creating a Twitter here and to get. I'm just leaving it a uh, single slash here. Test. and symbol is first API. You can actually create an API point within five lines of code. But uh, don't think it is actually a simple or uh, more, more like a school project thing. It's not like that. It is actually super powerful too. Uh, a lot of big chains are actually using fast API for their backend too. So uh, it's not actually a simple thing. But it is actually making us go through so Actually we need to uh, install UV converse for running that server. So I'm just install, installing. That's it. The we can see was also actually installing. Yep. Here we go. The server is actually running. So we can actually access the 
they appear here. You can see the appears every year. We just write five lines of code and we run it in a server and right now we are accessing the API. That much symbol is past API. So API is fine, we're getting the API. So what about the documents? We need to document it, right? All the developers, we need to document it. So how we are documenting? We can actually get the documents here. Stop. Or you can uh, specify the required path you need. I'm getting the documentation here. You can test the APIs here also. Yeah, I'm just executing. Yeah. I'm getting the status code 200, and there's a body here. Response body. That that was easy is possible. Yeah? This is actually the testing section. So what about the documentation? Right. Some of you guys might be thinking about the documentation. So about the documentation thing. You can simply go there. Actually you can do multiple ways to do uh, the API point. You can simply document it here or something like. Uh, a 
like when ASCII network, uh, as ASCII framework. So basically, first it is built at the point. So you can integrate any uh, graphical library currently out in the market on Python. And uh, consider the strawberry, strawberry graphql that was actually, uh, strawberry is actually officially supporting the BAST API and giving you the official documentation for BAST API too. So that is one of the coolest thing you guys can do. And uh, for this thing, I uh, hope uh, for this presentation some of you guys are actually coming from Django or those kind of thing. So I really want to give you some tips, that is why I added this screen. So uh, actually you guys can, uh, I, know, I know a lot of guys are saying that Django is giving the uh, Django admin thing. So the, if you guys want to, if you guys, if you guys are going to miss that thing in uh, come, coming to Fast API, you are on the Django already create the Fast API admin too uh, for you guys. So if you guys want to implement, uh, so if you guys are working with Postgres or something like that, you guys can implement it well. And uh, then uh, for the last for the presentation, I know Fast API is great. A lot of you guys are already talking about Fast API. I know it is great. It is actually faster, okay, and it is actually faster and uh, easy to code. Everything was fine. So why should I want to migrate to Fast API? And who are the people using it? It's, it's uh, just uh, come out in four years ago. So are the people are really using it, right? So that kind of question. Microsoft. Microsoft actually migrated its uh, few servers to Fast API. That's the only part. It migrated as what? Some of its servers. Some of its servers to Fast API. And Cisco, you can see the details in Fast API uh, official documentation. Uh, they, actually, they actually uh, mentioned what are the services and those kind of things in Fast API official documentation. So this is uh, Cisco. Podcast host. I hope you somebody might know that. Netflix. And Uber too. These are the tech GMs uh, officially announced they are using Fast API. So Fast API is not actually the play school thing. Fast API is powerful, easy to go, ready for production, one of the best framework currently out in the market. So thank you. So that's the project. That's all about the presentation. So if you guys have any uh, doubt or any uh, anything needed about this presentation or a, about Fast API, if I know that, I will uh, answer that. So you guys can uh, connect me on LinkedIn. I am actually available 24 minutes on LinkedIn. So if you guys want to connect, you guys can connect. I will answer that. Uh, if I know, I will answer that. Else, I will refer and I will answer that. So that's all about my presentation. And thank you.